a buzzing fills the air. The creature before him is proof that the world Vellum once knew is dead. Nobody ever loved wasps, but this thing, this monstrosity, that's not a wasp anymore. This doesn't seem like the worst the cataclysm is going to throw at him, though. Instead, it seems like a hint of the scale of danger yet to come. Welcome back to Cataclysm. Dark days ahead. The journey of Vellum. Vellum sees this creature in front of him. And it is poisoned. That's interesting. Seems like it maybe has had a bad time of it. But it is a yellow jacket queen grown to the size of a horse towering over her daughters. Probably Vellum has seen some of these things walking around before or seen them from a distance. Even with her abdomen swollen with eggs and wings long unused, she still poses a threat to interlopers should her children have failed at subduing them. The fact that it even mentions the children concerns me. But the thing is, this is a wasp queen. It is a continuing threat to the nearby area. And although the fact that it has, in fact, wiped out quite a few zombies, we have a little bit of mana. And there is a chance that we might want to attempt to take it down. Let me check real quick. Is it faster than us? It is much slower than us. And we're currently walking. No, we're running. So let's actually stop running. And is it faster than us now? A bit slower than us. So we can outwalk this thing. We don't know if it has a ranged attack. Like maybe it can shoot barbs at us or it might be able to spawn wasps. If it does spawn wasps, I have seen such things before. Vellum has seen such things before. They seem to be very, very fast and we're not sure if we can run away from them. But what do we have? So we would have four magic missiles, which would do probably about 100 damage, right? We don't have enough for a wind strike. And if we did a mana bolt, it really wouldn't do much. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to put away the the National Guard bayonet. And we're going to do one mana bolt or not mana bolt, one magic missile. And we're just going to see what happens. We hit it for 21 damage and we hear a lot of noise. OK, it's to the south pretty far away oh boy that 21 damage did not move its hp bar vellum sees this giant creature and knows that this is a threat and this is a threat that is very local to us this will prevent us from exploring part of the city and and exploring this region but seeing how little damage it just took this thing might own this area but it is slower than us. So I think what we're going to do is instead of burning our mana, we're going to equip our bow and we're going to be careful about this. We're going to go to fire our bow and we're going to very carefully watch how quickly it comes to us. If it gets within one tile of us right here, we'll go ahead and fire. Did it really just bounce off? Oh man, grazing shot. Okay, and yeah, let's run back. Do we still have um, our power going? We don't. This might be a good time to activate it, to be honest. We're going to take extended stride. How long does it take to cast? 36 moves. So a third of a second. Okay. So we're a bit faster now. Are we Yeah, much slower than us? Good. We don't see anything else on our compass, so it's just us versus this thing. We're going to aim up again. We do have to be careful, though, because aiming our bow does take stamina. I'd really like to get a good hit, and it reflects off the uh, Wasp Queen's carapace. So this thing is armored. Okay, if we stop running, is it faster? No, we can we can actually walk away from this thing. So we got a good hit, and it's still deflected. This is one of the values, by the way, of magic, is that magic doesn't deflect. So we're going to hit it again. Oh, and it... 21 damage. Barely moves the bar. Hitting it with four magic missiles has done less than a fifth of its HP. This thing is hardy. This thing is meaty. What we're going to do is... Oop, it got a little close there. Because 
We're kind of cutting corners here. We're going to pick up our arrows. Run while doing it. And then... I want to see... If it has a nest or anything. So very quickly... We're going to check... I'd love to smash all these zombies that it killed for us. I really would love to. I don't see any more wasps. What we're doing is we're just watching the compass down here. Oh, it got stuck in the car. And it lost sight of us. No, it didn't. Oh my god, it just ripped through that car door in like two seconds flat. Holy crap. We do not want this thing catching up to us. It has murdered the countryside here. Man, if we could kill this, this would be so nice because this would have been an entire area here that was completely clear. The problem is, is that... I wonder if this thing flies. It might be too big and heavy to fly. I don't climb over... Yeah, it's not flying. It's just smashing into the fence to try and chase us. Is it going to banish to chase us? Is it still seeing us? Okay. So we can see farther than it. But it probably remembers where we are. So when we want to keep going. That zombie literally just got up. That was on the ground two seconds ago. Uh... I think that zombie walked outside and just got pulverized by that bait, by that wasp. Figured I can take a moment here. And just crush a few of these. Oh, the giant wasp sees us again. Is it heading towards us? No, it's heading towards that zombie. So we're going to crush this guy down. If we could position ourselves to not be attacked by this wasp, we can, like, basically use it. We're going to actually catch our breath. We can use it to take out all of the nearby zombies. The fact that it can't go over this fence very easily does make me feel a little bit more confident as well. We're going to go ahead and head in here, though. And kind of, it, I'm just going to think for a moment about what we're doing here. This is an electronics store. Is there anything we care about in here? The batteries will be useful. We'll, we'll take on any batteries we find. Super glue is also, we're kind of getting into the phase of Vellum's life where um, crafting is uh, something that we'll be pretty interested in. So we're going to kind of try and keep an eye out for, we'll take the electronics book. Cr good crafting materials. A water purifier is actually unnecessary with the amount of magic we have. Um, one of the things about the late stage, the late stage uh, magic crafting is that uh, it actually uses a lot of science concepts. So we do actually want we have reason to learn science, applied sciences. If we see anything sciencey, it's a good idea. Um. Okay. I, I say we maybe leave the giant deadly wasp for now i kind of want to head down to the sporting goods store i'm still on the lookout for a a better bow we currently have a compound bow and if we could get a composite bow that would actually be kind of fantastic there's also a very good chance that we eventually move away from bows as well largely because i think that um and this is a fully out of game problem here is that uh, there it takes a lot of time to do the archery thing and it's not very interesting i feel like i i end up cutting a lot of um me just aiming from the final lighting uh, from from the final i read the word lightings and then said the word lighting from the final footage so it, it might be better to like have um a sword or a spear because it would just be more interesting and then have magic as our secondary um alternatively okay that is we're going to pull out our knife because we remember these things have very little HP. Wasp guard. So there are more wasps. 
a mutated wasp worker buzzing around the nest while her foraging sisters are relatively content to leave you be. This one won't hesitate to attack anything she considers a threat to the nest. Don't linger. Fortunately, I don't think she can see us because of all the smoke we're standing in right now. So that, that, um, gangrenous, um, actually kind of helped us out a little bit there. We made a lot of noise, though, so we don't really want to stick around. So there are some wasps left, but it does seem like the queen herself is probably not... Oh, I should have checked to see if that guy was faster than me. A little too late. The queen herself is not as much of a threat, at least to us, but it's something we have to be constantly cognizant of, because if we forget about it and we, like, pop out a door and the queen's right in front of us, probably would be a very bad idea. There's two feral elves in here. They're going to be able to see as far as we can. And I don't really want to fight those guys in melee. We're going to pull out our bow and actually go down this alley here. See if we can get in a back door because they're probably going to rush out of this place coming after me. So I can basically rush back in after they leave. We'll pry open all these crates. Um, flare gun, ski goggles, nothing terribly interesting. Pull cue, ice axe. Is that actually a pretty good weapon? No, it's not a good weapon at all. It only does 15 pierce damage. Not really worth it. Neoprene arm sleeves. I wonder if those are actually any good. So we can hit wear here and look at the neoprene arm sleeves. So they do provide a lot of warmth. Only a very small amount of bash cut piercing and ballistic. Someone just showed me this menu the other day. Really nice menu. Um, very little encumbrance, though, so that's nice. Five encumbrance is basically nothing. Basically, we tr we want to ideally stay below the yellow numbers, which at our strength level, 10 is where we hit yellow, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, and our feet are actually too warm right now. That's not something that I'm super worried about. It does mean that my feet are damp which probably causes us morale issues, I would guess. I'm actually not sure what that causes us in issues. But we do want to take care of that, and I think the main reason why our feet are damp right now is because... Where is it? Um, here we go. We go to our armor thing. We're wearing wool socks, which provide just, like, too much warmth. So we can find normal socks that fit. That'd be pretty nice. But the main reason I came here is... Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. That scared the crap out of me. I literally jumped. It was just a rock. He threw a rock at me. Okay. Let's back up. And... Um, ignore it because it's probably... Yeah, it's... they threw another rock. That's fine. One shot almost immediately went down. We're going to store the bow... I finish him off with a knife. Because he's a feral, he actually has, like, none of his stuff is dirty, but at the same time, none of it also fits. So, we'll take our arrow back. And then, that means that there's a chance that the other feral is still in here. So we need to keep an eye out. There's a fencing foil here. Um, Fortunately, a fencing foil is rather useless as a weapon due to its flexible shaft and bolt tip. Okay, never mind. And there's a zombie there. I can't see us yet. Splinter camo combat jacket. Oh, there's actually quite a few zombies in here, huh? Get our bow back out real quick. Oh, there are... Excuse me, there are a lot of zombies in here. Must have been the cracking of the barrel that I did, maybe? they That's what they probably heard, is whenever I break, broke and open, broke open these barrels back here. We'll see if I can take care of one or two of them real quick. But I'm not going to risk a lot here. Did we knock it down? Downed and bleeding. Yes, we did knock it down. Okay, we're going to aim at the next one then. Okay, it got up really fast. Screw that. I would like to take these guys out, though. 
I really wanted to search the rest of this shop. And they immediately grabbed me. Are you kidding me? Screw this. I'm out. What we'll probably do is... um No, we'll keep our bow out. We're going to come around the side here. There's just a chicken. Okay, then. I don't think we can outpace the runner. We'll stop and fight it real quick. Bleeding. So let's go ahead and uh, put pressure on our wounds, trying to stop the bleeding. Uh, it's not working. We'll go ahead and use a bandage, which honestly... It's not the worst thing in the world. We should probably bandage up anyways, just to get things starting healing. Pull our bow back out. And um, make sure we take our arrows with us. What we're going to do is we're going to see if we can loop around to the front side here and draw things away from the front of the store. Or to the front of the store, even. I don't use the carbon fiber arrows. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see if we can, like... Oh, wow. Critical for 73 damage. There you go, Vellum. That's what you need to be doing. We can either take a bunch of these out, or, alternatively, we can try and, like, lead them out the front and then pop back in and very, very quickly loot the place and see if we can find a better bow or any more arrows. Nicer arrows are going to be something that we won't be able to craft for a pretty long time. So it'll be pretty nice to get some good arrows. Go ahead and pull out our dagger here. They're pretty much close to dead anyways. There go. God, I get rid of those runners. There we go. Another one down. Back up a little bit and catch our breath. See about taking out the zombie kid. Just going to just absolutely tank our morale, but needs to be done, unfortunately. The feral elves are going to be a kind of a bigger problem up front here. There's one of them. I oh, ignore that because we it's just throwing a rock at us. Pretty much a guaranteed kill there because it was already so damaged. Um, ankle socks are not as warm. So we're going to go ahead and wear those and grab our arrow and we'll go ahead and drop the wool socks. Unfavored them as well so that we don't track them. There's the other feral. He's also pretty badly damaged. Ignore the rock. The rock does hurt, but uh, it's not as bad as him like coming and hitting us in melee. Oh man, he is throwing a lot of rocks at us. And that zombie got pretty close while we were smashing. Smashing does make a lot of noise, so it does kind of draw them from a distance. And finish them off. Grab our arrows. Arrows. And uh, anything here that we want? No, not really. Okay. We'll pull out our knife because if we go into the store, we'll be in close range. We're not fighting a tough zombie in melee. We are so fragile in melee, which is why I'm thinking about a spear. For, uh, um, uh, for Vellum's, like, actual offensive weapon. The staff is going to be helping us cast magic, but um, unless we did a martial arts style for the staff, um, it is very risky. Meanwhile, a spear, we actually can reach a full tile away with a spear. It'd be nice if we could get um, the Bramble Spear, the one that's part of a spell going. 
but it, it did seem like it was pretty expensive to cast. So maybe not the best thing. It might be better to have a permanent spear. We're going to very quickly check our wounds. Nothing that we can improve. Zombie right there. Back up and take him out. Oop, that is a tough. Tough zombie takes precedence. It gets on top of us. We'll have a problem. They also seem to be a little bit faster. Yeah, they're a bit faster than the other zombies as well. We are getting pretty consistent with our aim here, though. But I'm actually going to back up a whole bunch and catch my breath because I just noticed that our stamina was getting really low. I think it bled out. It did. Beautiful. The broadhead arrows, I think, just do a ton of bleeding as well, which is, which is helping tremendously here. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Can we finally loot this place? Nope. There's still a few more zombies here. Definitely feel like some sort of, like, night stalker feeling to this place because, you know, just being able to take out everything so dead quiet is very fitting for the for Vellum's fighting style, being, you know, an elf and having been used to, uh, ooh, a book, been used to hunting in the, in the woods. We'll go ahead and take those books. I don't see... Any hunting supplies, though? I guess there's a chance that since sporting goods doesn't necessarily cover hunting. As unfortunate as that is. Okay. If she's... If this kid is going to keep ducking in and out of the darkness, we're just going to take her down with a... Um, a knife strike there. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and mark this um, looted then. And honestly, just get out of here. There's another sporting goods store across the street. Might as well check it. The knight is still pretty young. And even though we've taken a few hits, we're, I would say, still pretty healthy. Ah, shit. There's a dog there. Okay. Um, Dog immediately bit us. This guy is having heavy bleeding, so we're actually just going to run back from it and take it down. I didn't want to take it down at the same time as the other one because there was another zombie back here. Another runner. In fact, so close to us that we're just going to take our time here and aim up. There we go. I didn't want to dedicate to aiming and then have it run at us. Pick up the knife. Oh my god. So many runners. How hurt is this guy? Not at all. That guy got on top of me very fast and immediately grabbed me. We're going to just blink. Oh, okay. Um, That's where zombies can get dangerous whenever they start grabbing you. So the reason we blinked right away there is to just prevent, because there was so many zombies nearby, just prevent them from, from piling on top of us. I am glad we have this bow, though, because if we were reliant 100% on our mana, we would have been out of the ability to clear zombies quite a while ago. And Vellum is being incredibly cautious, but it's only just because of the fact that in some of the recent encounters we've had, it, our proximity to our death has been incredibly close. One could even say that we have seen the face of death and we're good with not seeing it anytime soon. For a while there, we were very confident, but we're taking the apocalypse seriously again. We'll go ahead and honestly just finish this guy off. Because magic, because I think he's the last runner. Another one, another zombie there. Fishing rod, sunglasses, denim boots. I'd love to sit here and knife fight this guy, but I just think it's a bad idea. We're going to back up and uh, some more arrows into him. I think that last arrow would literally pierce through him. Oh, no, it broke. Gotcha. That's unfortunate. Ooh, there's a fully repaired leather belt there. Do we have a leather belt? 
Um, I don't see one question mark. We'll grab it. In fact, we're just going to wear it and then belts. Yeah, we didn't have a belt. Okay. That's really useful because we can put tools on that and they'll be a little bit less cumbersome. Um, a, a book on sucker punching people? That's pretty hilarious. Okay, let's see. Complete Trapper. After Adventures. Sure. Of course, we collect... Uh, I think the fitness band might actually be very good for us because it'll allow us to track our heartbeat at such levels and calories and has a clock. Um, and will be a little bit better than our um, the UPS smartphones, I think. So we can go ahead and drop the smartphone and the bat and the uh, cell phone. I will likely take that sheath as well. That's over here. Ooh, a bow. Oh, it's a short bow. That's unfortunate. Just to have an extra sheath if we end up needing one. Right is useful. Short bow is emphasizing portability and agility over power. All wood bow is suitable for small game and harassing enemies. Yeah, it does a lot less damage. It's four times 1.5. To give you an idea, our current modern recurve bow um, does six times 1.5. So those small numbers, whenever it comes to bows, do add up a lot because of the fact that they have the 10 times critical multiplier. So that ends up being like, you know, 20 to 30 damage whenever you get the much desired bow crit, a wrist bandolier. We'll go ahead and pry open these crates. A single adhesive bandage, not worth it. Ankle socks, rash guard, long sleeve shirt. Nothing interesting. But the fact that there was a bow in here does mean that I wasn't incorrect in thinking that the sporting goods store could have the stuff that I am looking for. I think these are changing rooms. Yeah. A hunting goods store, though, would be much better. Fire station. That seems like a bad idea. There's probably firefighters there. Um, and the, I bet the firefighters probably have really good armor. Bookstore. Another sporting goods store. I'm not seeing much else down here. Because of how early it is in the night, I think what we might do is kind of update our bandages for a second there. I'll check. Did we actually ever get expert wound care? We have not gotten expert wound care. We'll probably want to get that at some point. It'll take several nights of uh, training to get expert wound care. But the value of it is that it'll make all of our bandages a little bit better. It's one of the one of the nicer um, utility utility proficiencies, in my opinion. Bank, dense urban, restaurant. So we probably want to avoid the dense urban and probably avoid the police department too. Jeez, um, the wasp was right around here. Should probably put a note for the wasp. Got a big W there. As Vela marks this ma map in all of the dangerous areas. Which must mean that there's probably another wasp nest somewhere around here as well. Oh man. I wasn't watching and that zombie almost just snuck up on me there. What are we losing strength for? Probably pain. Yeah. One of the downfalls of using a bow as well is that despite our dexterity being really good. Which means that our accuracy is really good. Bows do mostly do damage off of strength. Which means that we're potentially not going to be able to use the better bows unless we can find a way to get stronger. Bellum does kind of just have a dainty elven arms, so... Finishing off the dagger. Save some time. And we're going to catch our breath before start starting to move. I just noticed that the sheath in the leather belt... There was a... a my character automatically put the sheath in the leather belt, and it actually looked like it took less moves to pull it out. I've never seen that. Yeah, sheath in leather belt takes zero. Interesting. So I'm going to unsign and unwear this sheath then. Now it has two sheaths in it. That's pretty funny. I wonder if it's just the leather belt, not necessarily the sheaths in the leather belt. So this, for a knife, the the sheath might be better 
or the leather belt might be better for quickly drawing and storing. And then whenever it comes to like swords, the sheath might be better. I'll have to experiment with that later. Um, it's not a system I'm super familiar with. This is an office skyscraper. I don't know if I want to be here. Let's head this way instead. And what I'm thinking about doing is heading north because the night is still pretty fresh. And uh, we'll see what we can hit along the way. Hardware store, garage. Not much here we're going to care too much about. The pawn shop. There we go. That's pretty nice. I know I said don't take alleyways, but we're actually going to take an alleyway here because if there's a fence along the left side of this alleyway, so if something happens, we can jump the fence and force something to knock down the fence. Plus, this involves... Well, it's just a fly. I was like, what the hell is that? But uh, this involves spending less time out in the open here. What is that? Wood ash. The prevalence of a bunch of ash here does not bode well. The gun store could have bow mods in it, but it's also very unlikely that we're going to be finding anything that Vellum is going to be interested in the gun store. It's going to be mostly ammo and, like, well, guns for that matter. Go ahead and turn on safe mode, and never mind. I was going to say we're going to just kind of run a little bit faster here, but we immediately ran into a uh, feral soldier. <sighs> Wearing military uniform with an armored vest, this appears a, a person seems to be highly trained military professional, not turn feral. Tense. Dirty hands grip a combat knife in their bloodshot eyes. Ah, uh, yeah, combat knife. No, thank you. I'm not going to mess with that. He would mess us up. We're going to go ahead and pull our bow back out and uh, just keep moving. The pawn shop could have some medieval garb and medieval gear. And that's something that, you know, it kind of fits into the fantasy Vellum has for even being in the apocalypse. He still much prefers things that remind him of being a proper mage and being a proper elf. So, you know, wearing medieval gear is just more interesting. We are actually going to take off this mask because I haven't seen a, um, I haven't, s what the fuck is that? It just appeared out of the darkness. An uncanny shadow envelops this creature as if light itself we're too repulsed to touch it. All you can make out is its shambling, human-shaped outline. It is a shady zombie. Considering the fact that we didn't see it even five feet away, we're going to knife it down for fear that I think it would just disappear again into the darkness. It did manage to uh, make us bleed, so we're going to get rid of the bleeding there and check our wounds otherwise. Uh, nothing else that we can improve. I did not know there can be freaking invisible zombies. Both these doors are... Yeah, let's go ahead and pry one open. Did we fail? I think we failed. Oh, that's bright. Oh, there's a car that's on. Can we actually just get in this car real quick and turn off its headlights? That might actually be the best thing here. So we're going to uh, take control of the car and turn off headlights. There we go. So that was going to just be a problem. With the street so close, I really don't want to break down that door. A water pump. Is that clean water? It is not clean water. Okay. Once again, walking down alleys. And that's why you don't walk down alleys. Right there. Just jumped out from behind those uh, dumpsters. He thought we went north, though, so we did manage to lose him. And I'm immediately not taking my advice again and going down the alley again. Let's see. It's 9.53 at night. We could just try and pick this lock. Let's try once. We immediately damage the tools. Can we just pry it open with our crowbar? And get some sufficient leverage. We could blink into the building, but that's pretty risky. Let's try again with lot picking. I don't think we have very good, um, yeah, we don't have very good devices still.
Oh, we there we go. On our third attempt, we did actually manage to pick it open. That's really good because that was dead quiet then. There's a Shams a Shamsher? Um I don't know how to pronounce that. Shamshir? Nice. Turf sword associated with Middle Eastern and Central Asian countries. Oh, it seems oddly dull and born. So there's actually fake and artificial weapons in Cataclysm, and the only way to tell is by reading this area here. And if there's something that's indicating that it's not exactly right, then it's a fake weapon. So that is a replica. Shamshir. Shamshir? Someone let me know how you pronounce that. What's on the desk here? Oh, a pen. Another locked door. We shouldn't have done that. Vellum pries open the door of the crowbar, trying to be a little bit faster, and sets off the alarm, which apparently was, in fact, still powered. If things didn't know we were here before, they do now. Yeah. There's things busting out the... busting out over there and trying to get in here. This place is filled. Look at this. Absolutely filled with potential loot. So many shelves of things that we could potentially get, though. So we're going to try... You know what? We'll actually close this door here because this metal, these metal bars will hold back an, a normal zombie almost indefinitely. And we're just going to go through everything here. Morning star? Is that a real morning star? This one feels off. The spikes are blunted. It is a replica. So we're just going to go through shelf by shelf real quick and see if we can find anything really good or really interesting. Um, We are going to take that book. Just basically any book is a good idea. Pair of wolf shed cufflinks. That's a magic item. Pair of silver cufflinks with a wolf's head engraved into them. Each cufflink has a bright ruby eye and pearl teeth. They appear to be growling. There is an inscription. When the moon shines, I become alive. This casts the spell Lupercalian Relief at level one and never fails. Ooh. We are going to go ahead and wear that. We have another magic item now. That, if I was understanding that correctly, I think turns this into a werewolf. Um, the fact that it has charges on it does mean that the crystallized mana charge. I do think that means that it will eventually regenerate mana on its own while we're wearing it. So we're going to see if that does regenerate mana. And then we'll have to try that out in a few days whenever it's um fully charged. Uh, definitely want to try it out in a situation where we're not in danger. A huge axe designed for warfare. Or it would be, but the axe heads aren't seated properly again. Yet another fake weapon. Of course. Let's see. Um, Chelsea boots, blazer, a Xi'an. A Xi'an's a type of sword, correct? Chinese double-edged straight sword. Quite worn, bent at an odd angle. Another fake. What says, what is an SSH-68 helmet? Um, an old SS-68 combat helmet from the Soviet Union. Okay, I vaguely know what that is. Mini fridge. Okay, now let's check the shelves. Looks like there's a lot of weapons here. French made hats. Army helmets. The tactical helmet might actually be pretty good. It's encumbrance 27. That's actually still pretty heavy. And same thing with this 23 over, th over here. At the same time, though, that ta that helmet right there, the army helmet, as much as we are loath to wear something like it, it is actually a lot of defense. So I think for the time being, until we find something better, we are going to wear it. A skateboard. Interesting. A morning star. We're going to try and do this one shelf at a time so I don't loot. Weight feels off. Spikes are blunted. Damn, another fake. Electric lantern. Military rucksack. Don't think this one be better than our tactical backpack. Sweater, baseball bat. Arming sword. This one doesn't seem to have been made right. Another fake. There is a roll mat here. A roll mat is meant for like light uh for um yoga and such, but we're actually gonna take it because it's really nice. To make a quick improvised bed if we ever get stuck somewhere. Like on a rooftop, for example. Axe is fake. Another arming sword is fake. Inkle holster. Another arming sword. 
is fake. Oh my gosh. Okay. Bowyer's Buddy. I think we already have that book, but we'll pick it up just in case. What's a Carid... Caridinu? Traditional ankle-length Shinto robe with several layers and very wide sleeves. Oh, I think I know what that is. I think I've seen one of those before. M1 helmets. Solar backpack. Roll mats. Camera. Lab coats. Elbow pads. Do we still have our elbow pads? I think our elbow pads might have broken. No, it was our knee pads that broke. Knee-high boots. I feel like those would be very encumbering. Okay, next set of shelves. So far, not that impressive. Dive knife. Another arming sword. Fake. Of course it is. We'll check this one as well while we're here. Fake. I promise you, there is a chance that, that, that these are not fake. We're just getting a Geon. Fake. Arming sword? Fake. Holy crap. Okay. Um. Longsword. Fake. Of course it is. Battle axe. Fake. Another pair of wolf shed cufflinks. Can we wear two? Does it interfere or anything like that? Where do they even go? Yeah, where what layer does a uh a wolf shed cufflink go on? It I think it's just a generic. Okay, so we have two now. Which means that if we do even if ooh, pair of binoculars, that's actually very useful. Especially being in a tower as we are. We'll be able to see much, much farther. Another fake arming sword. But the having two of them means that we'll be able to like um store one charge or ideally double our amount of charges. We can see what's all in here, so we're just going to kind of glance through and see if anything... The jewelry could be useful, because we, once we get the ability to melt it down, we'll probably get a lot of gemstones and such. But man, this pawn shop was... I feel like this is a pretty common experience for the modern man, but this pawn shop was deeply disappointing on a lot of levels. There is one more set of shelves here, though. Arming sword and a broadsword. Both fake, of course. There is a throwing knife here, though. We are going to take the throwing knife. Um, throwing knives are very, very strong, especially if we if we like learn how to use them properly. But yeah, that was um, that was fiercely disappointing. I was expecting a lot more from a pawn shop. Is there anything interesting nearby? Give me a second. I'm gonna look around. After a quick glance through our surroundings, the only thing that really stands out to me as something that would be interesting for Vellum is the Antique Store. And there's a chance that that just means vases. Um, it doesn't really say on Vellum's map whether the Antiques are anything terribly interesting. Um, one thing I did think to think of, though, is uh, how bad does our helm being... Our head being encumbered reduces dodging and blocking. Uh, okay, that's something we need to keep in mind. Our torso being encumbered, mostly because our backpack is completely full. Let's actually check, drop our backpack real quick and see what it looks like when our backpack isn't on. See if this is worth dropping in combat. Wow, it goes all the way down to 13. Yeah. So that's something we should keep in mind is if we do go into combats, um, dropping our backpack could be really useful. Can we just get out this front door? No, we cannot. Well, we are going to get out of here then. And I think that, uh, if only because we're so loaded up on stuff, we are going to head back. Well then, what we're going to do is we are going to blink out of here instead. Yep, because <laughs> that was a lot of zombies. That was a lot of zombies right at the door there. I'm glad that I managed to get the door closed. Trying to just, like, open the door, glance at them, and go, you know what? Nope. And close the door again. Zombie corpse. Never a great sign. Oh, it was a panicked person. Okay, it wasn't actually a zombie corpse. What is this? It's an office tower. Okay. 
that a boomer? Let's see if we can shoot the boomer real quick. If we can pop it, it'll draw a bunch of stuff near here, and then we can kind of just... Oh wow, we barely even hurt it. We can just kind of, um... Use the distraction to start around. I'm starting to think it's not worth it. I was hoping to get a crit, but it just didn't happen. Feral Dwarf. That guy can see us because he has just as good night vision as we do. And is he faster than us? No, he's slower. Let's say there's no way. We will run then. What the hell is that? A pupating zombie. This human corpse is wrapped in sticky black fibers that cover everything from the neck down. Beneath the wrapping, there are strange rhythmic movements. Bro grotesque behold. You know, I'm going to go ahead and say no. Uh, a hard no on that one. Okay. You know what? We're going to take care of this feral dwarf. Wait until he gets closer because he's very short. Well, our knife. Okay, the knife was a mistake. Knife was very much a mistake. Let's put away the knife and uh, finish him off with a uh, magic bolt. Oh my gosh. I really need to remember that Vellum just, just has no capability of fighting in melee right now. Just got wrecked by that thing trying to fight it in melee. We'll bandage while we have a moment. Just to get things moving as far as, like, healing. And, uh... Or bow back out and let's just get home. Feels like we've killed so many zombies, but it feels like we have barely made a dent in the population of this city, which, in all honesty, makes a lot of sense. It's not like. You know, there's probably thousands of people that lived in the city and. Less than 1%, or even maybe, maybe, even maybe less than 1% would have survived the initial wave of the apocalypse. And less than that would have survived what happened afterwards. But for now, we've made it back safe. And uh, we're going to uh, take stock of what we managed to get, what little it was. appropriately pick up and wield our magic staff now that we're home and because it just kind of looks really bad we are going to take off the armor helmet our army helmet for now we'll wear that going into combat literally only because it is a very significant amount of protection but we are going to uh kind of just deposit everything we've got take stock and call it a night with that i'm going to have to leave you here this has been Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, the journey of Vellum. I have been Arima. I hope you guys have been enjoying the episodes. If you guys are, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It keeps me going, keeps me happy, and um, keeps me knowing that you guys are still enjoying the things that are going on. We are solidly in the mid-game of Cataclysm now, which is a lot of exploration and a lot of crafting. So if you have any ideas or suggestions of things you'd like to see me do or see Vellum do, um, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will take them into consideration. With that, I hope you guys have a fantastic night. Goodbye.